Hi guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. If you've been following me on Facebook or Twitter, you'll have noticed recently that I've been working on a little project that I've called Behind Closed Doors, and that is a survival horror game, but in a PlayStation 1 kind of aesthetic. So today I'm going to show you how I actually got that PlayStation 1 kind of style to the game. And if you're interested in following the progress of this game being made, make sure you go and follow us over on Twitter. I've got a link on screen and I'll also put the link down in the description as well. And just before we continue, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter. Go check out his website. See what he's up to. Keep up to date. And I also want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. So that's Steve UK and Brandon Zill. You guys are fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to change a scene from something like this really basic scene into something a bit more like this. As you can see, we've got the jagged edges that are synonymous with the PS1 and older graphics. We've got low res textures. And we've got none of that new stuff like anti-aliasing. So let me just revert this project back to its original state and we'll start building this PlayStation camera together. So we're back to pretty much our original state. Now let's start downgrading the quality of this image. So the way that we're going to do this, we're going to be casting our view from the camera to a render texture. And then we're going to show that render texture to the player instead of being able to see through the digital eyes of a first person controller. So the way that we need to do this, we're going to set up a quick folder and we're just going to call this PSX just to keep everything to do with this rendering together. And inside that folder, I'm going to create a render texture. I'm going to call that PSX texture. And just for the purposes of this, I'm going to set this to HD, so 1920 by 1080. So now that we have our render texture, we need a way to display that in our game. And the way we can do that is by using a quad. So again, for anything to do with the renderer, I'm going to keep it as its own game object. So I'm going to create an empty and I'm going to call that PSX renderer. Now inside of this, I'm going to go ahead and create a 3D object and I'm going to create a quad. Now, quads kind of like a plane, it's just a four-sided object, but what this will allow us to do is display a render texture. So we can remove that mesh collider because we know we're not going to need that. And then the final thing that we need to display this render texture onto our quad is a material to actually assign to the quad itself. So we're going to create inside of our PSX folder a new material. And I'm going to call that PSX Mat. So we'll start with the material first. We want to change the shader from URP slash lit to unlit texture. We're going to keep the tiling and the offset exactly the same, but inside of the texture itself, we want to drag this PSX te render texture that we've just created into that slot. And now if we drag a PSX material to a quad, we see it turns completely black. That's because the render texture currently isn't rendering anything. Now we want our camera's view to be rendered onto that texture. And that's really easy to do. We'll just go ahead and select our main camera, our first person view camera. And right down towards the bottom, we have an output section. Now in our output texture, we see that it accepts a render texture. We click on the little eyedropper and select our PSX texture we should see our render texture is now rendering whatever our camera is seeing. So if we rotate our player, we can see that that updates in real time. Perfect. But now the problem is we can't see this. As you see, we have the no cameras rendering error over here, and that's not ideal. So again, inside of our PSX renderer game object, where we've got a quad, I'm just going to rename that quad to render texture, we're going to add another camera. And I'm going to rename that straight away to render camera. Now we need to change a few things inside this one. This camera's projection type isn't going to be perspective, it's going to be orthographic because we're just looking at a flat plane. The FPS camera is going to be what's giving us our depth and our perspective view. 
this is just going to be rendering whatever this texture is showing. So we'll set that to orthographic. And then we just need to drag this about a little bit and position it so we can see a render texture in view. And there it is, just about. So now we need to scale this up. So just to make sure that we get the correct aspect ratio for the demonstration, we set the render texture to output at a HD format. So that's 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to set the scale of the render texture to be 1920 on the X by 1080 on the Y. Now that's going to be absolutely huge. The only reason I do that is so I can get the aspect ratio perfect. Now if we grab the anchors and scale using shift and alt at the same time, we'll scale inwards and also keep our centered position. So now we can scale that to the point where it's filling our screen. Now this may take a little bit of time just getting it perfect. I'm just going to rush this a little bit. So it may not be right on the money, but it'll be close enough. So now we can see that a render camera is completely rendering what's on a texture. And if we play the game, it should look exactly the same. And it does. But the only difference is we're not seeing from the player's viewpoint, we're now seeing just a static camera that's pointing at the render texture. And you may have noticed this, there are two audio listeners in the scene. Whenever you add a new camera, that comes with an audio listener and you only want one audio listener in your scene, as the error says. So we can just go ahead and on our render camera, we'll delete that audio listener. Simple, that'll fix that little warning message there. So we've got to this point now, and currently all we're doing is exactly the same as we did before. We can see exactly the same as we did before, so what's the point? Well, now that we're output into a render texture, we can change those quality settings. So we want to downscale the camera's output to a PlayStation 1 resolution. And we can do that by coming over to our PSX texture in our project folder. And instead of either the default size that you gave it at the start or this full HD, what we're going to do, we're going to change this to be 256 by 224, which is pretty much the lowest resolution any game on the PS1 ran at, because we want that full nostalgic feel. And I'm also going to change the filter mode from bilinear to point. Now, if you do quite a lot of pixel art work, you must know about the filter mode point, because what that does, that keeps all the edges of the pixels crisp, and it kind of removes any anti-aliasing that will happen automatically. And now that we've got our render texture set up, we can hop over to our main camera and change a few more settings. So the first one we want to create. So the first one we want to change is our clipping plane. Now this won't make a difference in my example, but if you have an open world example or something with a, a longer draw distance, then this will add that um, effect where objects in the distance kind of just appear, they pop into view because they've reached the render distance. Currently, or by default, it's set to 1000 and that's way too far. We want to change that to 100. So we'll only render objects that are within 100 units of our camera. Next, we'll move down here to anti-aliasing. By default, it'll be set to fa fast approximate. We want to change that to none because the PS1 did not support anti-aliasing as far as I know. But it just makes this effect look a lot better anyway. And now that we've changed the resolution of our render texture, we're going to have to change the resolution or the size of the render texture quad that we have in our scene. So again, I'm going to do it in the same way to preserve the scale. So I'm going to set it to 256 on the X, 224 on the Y, and just revert that back to 1 on the Z. Zoom all the way out, and we'll do exactly the same as we did before. Now you may have already noticed that this aspect ratio doesn't fit a screen, which is a widescreen screen, screen, screen. So you could, in theory, still output it to a, um, a 16 by 9 or 16 by 10 resolution, but keeping it to this 4 by 3 adds a lot to the experience, adds a lot to the effect. So at the end of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how I kind of mask that in behind closed doors. So if we just go ahead and play this game, we'll have a look what it looks like now.
So you can already see we've got this jagged edges, we've got no anti-aliasing, but the textures look a bit blurry, they look a bit muddy, and that's not good enough. We want those hard, sharp, pixel art edges. So the way that we're going to have to do that is we're going to go into the textures that we've assigned to the materials for our objects. So I'm going to select all of these, and over in the inspector, I'm going to change the filter mode again from bilinear to point. We'll already see that crispen up a little bit. And just to add that low quality feel to it, the max size I'm going to bring all the way down to 128. So that's going to compress our textures to be 128 pixels by 128 pixels at the max. And now if we were to play the game again, we'll see that that muddiness in the textures has disappeared and we have beautiful crisp pixel art. Look at that, I love it. I am a real fanboy for the PS1, so this kind of thing is bread and butter to me, I love it. So that is the basics of how you get your PlayStation renderer up and running. You can tweak those settings, you can output the render texture at a HD format if you wish, you can output this at any different resolution that you like. These are just my preferred settings. And like I said before, I'm just going to show you a quick way of how to mask this ugly uh, empty border around your game. So inside the PlayStation renderer, I'm going to add in a new quad. So that's 3D object quad. I'm going to call this TV overlay because we're going for full nostalgia. So let's put a TV screen in front. Now I've already gone ahead and created a material for this, but all this is is an image texture of a TV overlay with the inside, the actual screen as white and the rest of this as a TV texture and then a material which is set to unlit transparent with that TV texture as its texture. Now if we drag that onto our plane, we can then scale this up to fit our screen. And again, if you hold Alt and Shift, that'll bring it up from the center and then Alt again to bring it out from the sides. This isn't gonna fit perfectly, is it? What has happened there? We bring that in just so it cuts off the sides. This texture does need to be a little bit wider so it'll actually fill the full screen, but we can just go ahead and select a render camera. Don't render the skybox, render it as a solid color, and then we'll just color pick the color from a screen. And one last time, we play this game. It now looks like we're looking through a 4 by 3 television. How good is that? I love that. And I want to see your examples of this, because I want to see this come back. I know Puppet Combo and others do uh, PlayStation 1 style graphics. I really want to see more people doing this. So if you actually do start making a game using this kind of system, please tag me on Twitter. I'd love to have a look at it. But that is everything that I've got for you today. I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.